Welcome to lesson 4.8, Perform Congruence Transformations. So, obviously in this title, we know what congruence means, but we're not sure on transformations. So the first definition we're looking at is that of a transformation. Transformations are ways to manipulate a shape that include a translation, a rotation, and a reflection. The transformed shape, so the final drawing, the final shape, is known as the image. The original shape, before we do a transformation, is called the pre-image. So pre-image is the original, the final shape after the transformation is an image. So the question is then, what are these translations, rotations, and reflections? You can simply think of a translation as a slide. So you're just sliding the shape, either vertically, horizontally, diagonally, and all the points move in the same amount in the same direction. So if it said translation, five units up, two units right, you would slide that whole shape five units up and two units to the right. And then we have a rotation. And a rotation you can think of as a turn or a spin. And it's around a fixed point. So think of like the hands on a clock. The fixed point is where they all meet in the middle and rotate around. And when we're looking at rotations, if an object is rotated counterclockwise, we call it a positive rotation. And in a clockwise direction, it's a negative rotation. And then we lastly have a reflection. And a reflection is a type of transformation that can be thought of as a flip. If you're flipping an object, you're reflecting it. So a reflection is a flip of a shape over a fixed line of reflection. So you're reflecting over a given line. All points are the same distance from the line of reflection, but now they're on the opposite side. And then lastly, we get to put the two ideas together and look at congruence transformations. In all the transformations above, a translation, a rotation, or a reflection, the, Im the image and the pre-image are still congruent because the overall size and shape do not change. So translations, rotations, and reflections are all three types of congruence transformations. So example one is just applying the vocabulary to what we're seeing. So this white triangle, kind of not a triangle, this white arrow, rotating, spinning around point P to give us this gray one. So that would be a rotation. The white shape slides down to the gray one. So that'd be a translation. The white shape is flipped over the line of reflection, which is V, so that would be a reflection. Apologies on my copy, I got some other notes that ended up typing in there, so I'm just gonna skip down to example two. Example two says figure ABC has the vertices A at one comma two, B at three three, C at four negative one, and D at one negative two. So first thing it says is sketch ABCD. So I'm going to sketch A, B, C, and D. A at 1, 2, B at 3, 3, C at 4, negative 1, and D at 1, negative 2. And then it says to sketch the image after the translation, X comma Y, and this arrow here means it's being translated, to X minus 4, y plus 2. So what we're going to do is take our original points 
for example, with a, 1 comma 2, and with the x value, 1, we're subtracting 4, and with the y value, we're adding 2. So a prime, a with the apostrophe, represents the point a after the translation or transformation. So a prime, b prime, c prime, d prime are what the original a, b, c, d become after they are translated. So for a prime, to figure out its location, we take a's points, 1 minus 4, and then the y value 2 plus 2. So a prime is at a negative 3 comma 4. Then we do the same with b, c, and d. So the x value minus 4, y value plus 2 according to the translation here. So b prime is at a negative 1 comma 5. For c, 4 minus 4 comma negative 1 plus 2 puts us at c prime of 0 comma 1. And then for d, 1 minus 4 and then negative 2 plus 2 puts us at the point negative 3 comma 0. So then our translation image, we're going to sketch that in here. So it went left 4 units and 2 units up. Left 4, 2 up. And then we get into the notation for a reflection. So if you're ever reflecting over the y-axis, so if we have our coordinates, x comma y, if that gets reflected over the x-axis, the new coordinate would be x comma negative y. So the rule is when you reflect over the x-axis to get your new points, you multiply the y-coordinate by a negative 1. If we're reflecting over the y-axis, so reflecting over the y-axis, the rule is to multiply the x-coordinate by negative 1. So looking at those rules, it says you're cutting out, or you're cutting figures out of paper, Use a reflection in the x-axis to draw the other half of the figure. So what we want to do to reflect a figure is we reflect the vertices or the endpoints. So we have one, two, three, four, five points on that original to reflect. One point here, one point here, one here, one there, and one there. So the points on the original figure in black there to reflect are 1 comma 1, 2 comma 4, 3 comma 1, negative 1 comma 0, and 7 comma 0. So if we're reflecting over the x-axis, the rule up here tells us to multiply the y-coordinate by negative 1. So the 1 comma 1 would become 1, negative 1. 2 comma 4 would become 2, negative 4. 3, 1 becomes 3, negative 1. Negative 1, 0 stays the same, because 0 is neither positive nor negative, so it's still 0. Same with 7 comma 0, that would stay the same point. So then you plot your new points and connect them to draw the reflection side of this original figure. All right, now it's asking us to graph segments and tell whether it's a rotation of the original about the origin. If so, give the angle and the direction. So the first things first, we just want to graph segment JK and LM. So JK is at 3 comma 1 and 1 comma 4. So graph over 3 up 1, over 1 up 4, and connect them to draw JK. Then do the same with LM, so negative 1, 3, 
negative 4, 1, connect those. Now, here's the way to tell if something's a rotation about the origin. We want to draw in the angles with the origin being the vertex connecting corresponding points. So for example, segment JK and LM, the J came first and that corresponds with the L, K came second and that corresponds with the M. So what I could do from my origin of zero, zero, I can draw the angle from zero, zero through J and then at the same time, because I use J, L is the first on the other, so I need to use that. Then we would do the same with the O to K, the origin to K, and the origin to M. Then what you want to do is set your protractor at the origin and measure those two individual angles. So we measure angle LOJ and angle MOK. If the two angles measure to the same number, then it is a rotation. If the two angles measure to be different degrees, it is not a rotation. So in A, both angles measure to be 90 degrees. Then what I have to look at is the direction of the rotation, if it's positive or negative, meaning clockwise or counterclockwise. Well, it started at JK and ended at LM. So from JK to LM, it's going this way, so that'd be a counterclockwise direction. So it'd be a 90 degree rotation counterclockwise. In part B, again, you want to first plot JK and LM to get your segments. So I have JK and I have LM. Then we would want to draw in the angles. So draw an angle LOJ, so connecting O to J and O to L, and then MOK, connecting O to M and O to K. If we measure those two angles, they are different measures, so that tells us this is not a rotation. Instead, this shape just slid over, so that would be a translation or a slide. And then we get down to example five, which is talking about our vertices of a triangle and verifying that the translation is a congruence transformation. So in this case, we need to translate or slide a triangle, and then we are going to show that it is still congruent. So first things first, you wanna just graph triangle PQR. So the points 2, 2, 3, 4, and 5, 2, right here, and connect those to create triangle PQR. Then they give us the notation of the translation. So x, y is translated, x plus 1, y minus 6. Tells me that it's going to move right 1 and down 6. So I'm going to take each of my points, add 1 to the x value, subtract 6 from the y. So my new points for x, y, and z, x matches up with p, so I'm using 2 comma 2. So 2 plus 1 and 2 minus 6 gives me 3, negative 4. y matches up with q, so to figure out y, we're going to use q, 3 comma 4, to get 4, negative 2. And z corresponds with r, so we'll use the 5 comma 2 to figure out z's points. 5 plus 1, 2 minus 6 is at 6, negative 4. So then I'm going to take my coordinates for x, y, and z and graph those. So I have my triangle down here, x, y, z. Now, what we need to do is to verify that those two triangles are still congruent. So what we could look at is first, side PR here, and side XZ here, 
are three units each, meaning they are congruent. Then what we could do is we could use the slopes for PQ and XY. So PQ and XY both have a slope of 2 over 1. So if the slopes are the same, that tells me that angle P is congruent to angle X. So slope of XY up to right 1, slope of PQ up to right 1. So I know XY, PQ have the same slope, making angle X and angle P congruent. So now I have a side and an angle. So now I just need to figure out one more piece to prove these triangles are congruent. We could use a couple different options, but I'm going to use, in this case, I didn't write it all out, but I could use the distance formula using points P and Q and X and Y to show those two sides are the same distance, giving us side, angle, side, side, angle, side, congruence. I could also look at the slope of QR and the slope of YZ, and those slopes are both negative 2 over 2, down 2, right 2, down 2, right 2, and prove that angle Y is congruent to angle Q. If I did that, then I'd have angle angle, side, angle, angle, side. So if you didn't want to use the distance formula, you could use slopes again and use a different triangle theorem. So there's a few ways to prove this is congruent. No matter which route you go, angle, angle, side, or side, angle, side, could even do side, side, side if you wanted to do a lot of distance formula. All the times we still see that triangle PQR is congruent to triangle XYZ. Therefore, the translation is a congruence transformation. So just verifying the rule that we had way back at the beginning of the notes. So the main piece for this lesson comes back to these definitions and the idea of congruence transformations.